Fuck. Good morning. Welcome to morning worship. Welcome to morning worship here at Rising Star. I'm Bob Gadney. I will be reading from the last part of Isaiah 40 and the first part of Isaiah 41. Lift up your eyes on high and behold who has created these things that bring, bringeth out their hosts by number. He calleth them by name, the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power and he will not fail one. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel, my ways are hid from the Lord, and, and my judgment is passed over by God. He has, he has not known, has thou ha, have you not known and have you not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator, the beginning and the end, there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have, have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not be faint. 41. Keep silent, O, before me, O people, and let the people renew their strength. Let them come near, then let them speak. Let us come near unto the judgment. Who raised up the righteous man from the east? Called him to his feet, gave the nation before him, and made him to rule over kings. He gave them as the dust to a sword and driven stubble to his bow. He pursued them and pass and pass safely even by by the way he had not gone far who has wrought who has wrought this who has done it calling the generations from the beginning the lord the first and the last it is me i have done it says the lord let us pray Dear Lord, we thank you for the change that you have made in our lives. We thank you for the, cha the great change that you have manifested for us. Lord, because of your death, burial, resurrection, all things are new. We are brand new cre creations, no longer lost sinners on our way to hell, but we are now brand new saints of God on our way to heaven we are brand new without spot or wrinkle how can this be when we were unclean as filthy rags as a dung hill now because of christ we are spotless pure clean we were broken now we are whole brand new relationship we were empty now we are filled with the Holy Spirit. We were unholy, unrighteous beings. We were holy, unrighteous beings. Now we are holy, righteous vessels of God. A brand new relationship with God, our Father, and children of God. We have brand new we have a brand new citizenship in the kingdom of God. No, no longer of this world. We have a brand new home not made with hands or human effort. We have been transformed by Almighty God, Jesus Christ. We were lost, 
now we are now we are saved forever we have a new direction we are we were we are now going up instead of going down we have a new outlook on life things are working out for our good in Christ Jesus we have a new hope of eternal life and not death we have a new purpose making disciples of God praying for the sick comforting those that are grieving praying for this lost world striving to live for God and not self we have been regenerated by our almighty God Jesus Christ how wonderful how wonderful you are Lord how wonderful we praise you. We thank you for ever and ever. Amen. Come on, let's make some noise, everybody. Amen. We know what time it is, right? It's time to praise and worship the Lord. Amen. Those who are willing, come on and step outside your car and stand on your feet. And let's clap our hands and let's worship the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Y'all ready? Come on, anybody ready? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands. Make some noise right now. Let me hear you. Hallelujah. Come on. Just like this. Just like this. Hey. Y'all ready? Let the glory of the Lord. Come on. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us and let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Come on, you know this. Sing that. Let the glory. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us and let the glory of the Lord rise among us and let the praises of our King come on. Rise among us and let it rise. Somebody say, oh, 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 oh. let it rise. Let it rise. Say, oh, 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 oh. let it rise. Let the song of the Lord, come on, let the song of the Lord. Rise among us and let the song of the Lord rise among us and let the joy of our King say, Rise among us and let it rise. Let's say that again. Let the song of the Lord, let the song of the Lord rise among us and let the song of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of our King sing, rise among us, and let it rise. Sing, oh, 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 and let it rise. Everybody say, oh, 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 and let it rise. Come on. Let the glory of the Lord, let the glory of the Lord sing. Rise among us, let the glory of the Lord rise among us, and let the praises of our King rise among us, and let it rise. Say it again, let the glory of the Lord, let the glory of the Lord rise among us, and let the glory of the Lord Rise among us and let the praises of our King yeah. rise among us and let it rise. Let the, Lord, let the songs of the Lord let it rise, rise among us and let the songs of the Lord rise among us and let the joy of our King sing. Rise among us and let it rise. Somebody say, oh, 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 let it rise, let it rise, sing, oh, 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 let it rise, let it rise, sing, oh, 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 oh
Is he wonderful? Lord. Anybody ready to let it rise? Always. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Hallelujah. Anybody chasing after the Lord? Anybody chasing? Come on, let me hear you if you're chasing after him. He's chasing after us. Yeah. Y'all ready for this? Where's Brian? Somebody said, play, Brian. Ah. Hallelujah. I'm chasing after you, and no matter what I have to do, cause I need you more and more. Said I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, cause I need you more and more. Help me sing that. I'm chasing, I'm chasing after you, and no matter what I have to do. Cause I need you more and more Say it again I'm chasing after you And no matter what I have to do Cause I need you more and more 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 Cause I need and I need you more and more, 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 yeah, more and more, more. Here we go. 
Hallelujah. How many know that he maketh me to lie down in green pastures? Come on. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. He goes before me. Defender behind me. Defender behind me. I won't fear. I won't fear. I'm filled with anointing. I'm filled with anointing. Yeah. My cup's overflowing. My, My cup's overflowing. No weapon can harm me. No weapon can harm me. Somebody say, I won't fear. I won't fear. People of God sing hallelujah. Comfort, he's my comfort 
persecuted, we endure. Being defamed, we entreat. We have been made as the filth of the world, the, out, the offscouring of all things until now. I read 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 6 through 13. And the Lord had a blessing to the hearing and doing of his most holy word. Please join me in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Father God, for who you are and what you've done. But we thank you, Father God, most of all, for your love, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you for sending your only begotten Son that allows us to have the right to the tree of life. And we ask, Father God, now that as we hear your word, we don't be just hearers only, but doers according to all that we hear. And this is all we ask in Jesus' most precious name. We do pray and give thanks. Amen and amen. First Corinthians chapter four, verses six to 13. There's a story that was told of a lady who really loved her pastor. She really loved her pastor. And so after the pastor finished preaching, she wrote the pastor a note, a note handed the note to the pastor and said, Pastor, you know, I think you're one of the greatest preachers of all time. I think you're one of the greatest preachers of all, all time. So the pastor went on about his way. And so his wife said, who is that woman? And what was that note? And the pastor said, oh, you know, she's one of the distinguished women in the congregation. She's intelligent and she just loves her pastor and she loves to hear good preaching. He said proudly. And so he asked his wife, I wonder how many more great pastors are there in this world? To which his wife replied, one less than you think. <laughs> One less than you do. You see, sometimes pride will take us to a place where we elevate ourselves more highly than we ought to think. And so, Paul, in addressing the Corinthians in this portion of Scripture, is dealing with their pride and conceit. And so he wants to remind them that this is not the way that it should be. This is not how we should operate. And if we want to have a, I gave the, the message a, a, a title, if you will, and it would be check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> check yourself before you wreck yourself. Paul was reminding the Corinthians, starting in verse 6, he said, now these things, brethren, now these things that he was referring to goes all the way back to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. It starts in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5, where he said, you know, neither Apollos or Cephas is anything. One plants, one waters, but God gets the increase. It's God who gets the increase. And he said that we shouldn't build on any other foundation other than what that's been laid already by the apostles with Jesus being the chief cornerstone. There is no other foundation. And every man's work will be tried for exactly what it is, whether it be gold, silver, or any precious metal, or wood, hay, and stubble that might burn up, but God will ultimately be the judge of our works. 
And so you're not to elevate one pastor or one minister over another. They're both considered to be slaves, slaves, servants. But how many of our leaders today would use that title? You know, we've heard before uh, that, you know, there's a lot of people you can't address, you know, unless you address them by their title first. I'm Dr. So-and-so. I'm sure, yeah, you did go to college for a long period of time. Or, you know, I'm Bishop somebody, or I am, you know, Evangelist, Apostle, this, that, or the other. But as the pastor said, and as I've witnessed, I've not heard too many people say that I am a slave to the ministry. I am a slave. I am a servant of Jesus Christ. Paul frequently addresses himself as such. I, Paul, a servant. I, Paul, a slave. A low galley rower on the boat. One of the lowest rings, rungs on the boat. These men were chained to the boat. And if the boat was going down, they were going down with it. But Paul identified himself as a slave. There's three things that I want us to remember before we leave here today. Three things. A, don't think more highly of yourself than you are. Two, you didn't make it on your own. All right. And three, humility, although not often glamorous, it gives God glory. It gives God glory. Amen. So, A, don't think more highly than you are of yourself. B, nope. You don't, you didn't make it on your own. You didn't get here by yourself. And, and C, humility, though not often glamorous, but gives God, God glory. So here we have Paul addressing the Corinthians who, in their own minds, have elevated their own positions. He said, now these things, brethren, I have figuratively transferred to myself and Apollos for your sakes. I became a servant for your sake, that you may learn in us not to think beyond what is written, that none of you may be puffed up on behalf of one against the other. So they still was comparing ministers against ministers. Oh, I'm, I'm of the Cephas Peter camp. I'm of the Apollos camp. I am of Paul's camp. You know, and even some even got some so spiritual, they say, oh, we of Jesus. Amen. We, we, we going beyond uh, Peter and Apollos and Paul. We're of Jesus, you know, and so, you know, we, they started comparing, making, you know, comparisons to each other. And, and Paul is saying, me and Apollos, that is not how we operate. We're both yours. We're, we're both ministers of the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So it, don't compare us with each other in that manner. You're not to think of one more highly than, than the other. He said, to learn in us not to think beyond what is written. What is written. That was written back in the Beatitude. Jesus mentioned that blessed are those who hunger, hunger and thirst after righteousness. We should be seeking him and not making a comparison with one another. We shouldn't be puffed up. They said they were puffed up. And that idea of being puffed up is oftentimes, and I've watched a lot of animal channels. You know, if you're like me, I, I like National Geographic. I like the uh, Animal Planet. But a lot of times when an animal feels threatened, they puff up, they raise their self up. 
they exaggerate their position. They may be small, but they want to puff themselves up to look bigger than they are. And that's what Paul is saying to the Corinthians. You're exaggerating your position. You need to remember that we're just servants. We're just slaves. It's God that gets the glory. Paul says, I was determined to know nothing among you except Jesus and him crucified. So why are you puffing yourselves up to exaggerate your position? You brag and you boast about what it is that you do or, or who it is that you're following. We're creating divisions. And that shouldn't be in the church. We're to be united. Ephesians 4 and 1 says that there's one body, one spirit, one Lord, one baptism. We're not to be divided. So don't think more highly than you are. In John chapter 13, Jesus gave an example when he washed the disciples' feet. Here we have the creator of the universe condescending to wash the feet of his disciples. And Peter, in his pride, said, Lord, no, you're not washing my feet. I can't let you do that. And Jesus said, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part with me. <laughs> and Peter said, well, Lord, not only my feet, but wash me all. Wash all of me. And sometimes we need to think less than ourselves, and sometimes we do. Humble thyselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. And he will lift you up. He says, who makes you differ from another? And what did you have that you did not receive? What did you, what do you, who makes you better than anybody else? We need to get out of this superiority, superiority complex where we think we're better than other people because maybe the office that where we serve in the church. You know, deacons are to be servants. They're to be servants. Whether you minister uh, as a deacon or an usher or in the kitchen or in the parking lot, do all as unto the Lord. Do all as unto the Lord. Nobody's position is more important than another. We're all part of the body of Christ. Jesus is not just coming back for those who have a deacon title. He's not coming back for those who have the kitchen ministry title. He's coming back for a church without spot or blemish. He's coming back for his bride. He said, my church that I'm building, that's who I'm coming back for. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Not even death can separate us from the love of Christ Jesus. Not even death can separate us. So number one, don't think more highly than you ought to. As I move on to point number two, you didn't make it on your own. You didn't make it on your own. Verse eight says, you are already full. <laughs> and when he says that you are already full, that implies like when we eat, you know, we go out to dinner and we eat, and then my son and my wife, we went out yesterday, got a nice meal. I got quite full. You might can still tell. My... <laughs> All right, y'all laughed a little bit too hard at my expense now, you know. 
but we got full. But see, this word here, Paul is saying, you guys, you think you're satisfied. Like you already got it all together. You are already full. You are already rich. You got it all. You have reigned as kings without us. Wow. And he makes reference here when he mentions that as during the millennial kingdom, when we'll reign as kings and priests with Jesus Christ. But he said, you, you are already reigning as kings without us. And he said, I, I indeed, I, 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 I could wish you did reign, that we might also reign with you. You didn't make it on your own. And this ideal brings me, to, uh, reminds me of the church in Laodicea in Revelation chapter 3. And I'll read it real quick. You don't have to turn there. Revelation chapter 3. I just want to read that real quick. Revelation 3. Verse, I'll start at uh, verse 14. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. He says, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish that you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because, he says, you say, I am rich. I have become wealthy and have need of nothing. And he says, do you not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked? Sometimes we need to remember our position. We forget, we exaggerate our position. Pride causes us to think more highly of ourselves than we ought. And we exaggerate our position. And God says, you're wretched. You're naked. You're miserable, you're poor, you're blind. And he says, counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. They say, we got it all together. I, Paul says sarcastically, you are already full. You are already rich. You have reigned as kings without us, and indeed I wish you did reign, that, you, that we might also reign with you. For I think that God has displayed us, the apostles, last, as men condemned to death. For we have been made a spectacle to the world, both to angels and to men. And so Paul again, gives them, well, causes them to take a look at exactly what he's trying to say here, the imagery. He says, I think that God has displayed us, the apostles last, as men condemned to death. And when he uses that terminology, he's looking at whenever a conqueror conquered another nation, then he led all the prisoners through the streets of the city by chain, led them through the city, you know, as men condemned to death. They were sent to, you know, the Roman Colosseums or, you know, any type of arena where they, the gladiators fought. But these men, they, they had a statement that says, uh, men, you know, condemned to die, we salute you, or something of that nature. But they were led to die into the gladiator's uh, arena. Sometimes without weapons, nothing to defend themselves with. 
or against wild animals, lions, beasts. They couldn't defend themselves. He says, I think that God has displayed us, the apostles, last as men condemned to death, for we have been made a spectacle. Everybody looking at us like we crazy. We've been made fools for Christ. But you're rich. You're full. You got it going on. And people are dying and going to hell because you think your position allows you a certain status. Remember who we are in Jesus Christ. He's called us more than conquerors. But we have to remember that we are servants of the Most High God. To be used for his honor and for his glory. The servants of the Most High God. He said, we have been made a spectacle to the world, both to angels and to men. He said, I wish you did. I wish you did reign. During the millennial kingdom, we all going to reign. But if you reign right now, then maybe we're there already. Might have been something I missed. Let me know. Because I'm still walking around here looking crazy. Because remember, Paul told them, the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. It's foolishness. To Jews, it's a stumbling block. We're out here preaching the message of Christ crucified, and they're looking at us like fools. How can you present this type of message about someone dying on the cross, a Jewish carpenter? Foolishness. To the Jews, it was a stumbling bar, block. To the Greeks, it was outright foolishness. You didn't make it on your own. We have to remember that we've been bought with a price. You are not your own. It says, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And what? That not of yourselves. That not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. No flesh will be justified in the sight of God. You won't be able to boast of how you got over in that way. You need to remember you got over by grace through the blood of Jesus Christ. You didn't make it on your own. You didn't have a salvation that you could uh, impart upon yourself. You didn't even decide when your birthday was going to be. <laughs> you know, you, you didn't even decide that. You didn't decide that you this you wanted to be in the United States. You could have been born anywhere. Africa, Norway, I'm saying Norway, uh, Asia, any of these places. But God chose for you to be born right where you were born. It's his doing, and he gets the glory. By the works of the law will no flesh be justified. You can't do enough. You can't be good enough. It's by grace we have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. We didn't make it on our own. We didn't make it on our own. One, don't think more highly than you are. 
Two, you didn't make it on your own. And my third and final point, say, wait a minute, Ken, you moving a little too fast here. Maybe you're going a little too quick. Humility, though not often glamorous, it gives God the glory. It gives God the glory. Verse 10, it says, we are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise. He's still at them sarcastically, but not trying to make fun of them, but just to help them to see what it is, their position that they're holding, is not correct. He says, we are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. Everybody looks at you like you're big shots. But we're looked at as fools because we're preaching the gospel. We are weak, but you are strong. Again, he's just saying, hey, you're getting this thing mixed up. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. We are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are distinguished, but we are dishonored. Dishonored. They considered themselves to be the lowest level, you know, in their humility. You know, I don't think, you know, there's certain factions who, you know, they give away all their worldly possessions and they go, and they live in convents and things of that nature. I don't, I don't think God ever asked us to do that. Ever asked us to do that, to just give up everything and go live somewhere away from everybody else. You know, not even trying to reach people exactly where they are. You know, the, the apostles went and met people exactly where they are, where they were. Paul says, I became all things to all men that I might win some. I might win some. You know, I sometimes you have to go to, the, to some areas that you might feel uncomfortable with. God might make you uncomfortable at some time, but he promised to never leave us or forsake us. And we need to have that rest assurance that if we do this in the power of God and not on our own power, that he will be there. He will lead us, guide us, and direct us and never leave us or forsake us. He says, but we are dishonored. To the present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and we are poorly clothed and beaten and homeless. To this present hour, he said, we are both hunger and thirsty. There's times maybe you have to go it out to help somebody else. Maybe you might be thirsty and hungry. He said, we are poorly clothed and beaten. Paul was beaten often. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 lays out like some of the things that he had to go through as an apostle. And I think sometimes it bothers us if we have to be made uncomfortable for a small period of time. Just a small period of time. 11 23. 2 Corinthians 11 23. Just take a look at this. Are they ministers of Christ? He said, I speak as a fool. He says, I am more. In labors more abundant. In stripes above measure. In prisons more frequently. In deaths often. From the Jews five times I received 40 stripes minus one. 
Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep, and journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, and hunger and thirst and fastings often and cold and nakedness. He said, if that wasn't enough, beside the other things, what comes up on me daily, my deep concern for all the churches. Now, he has a laundry list of inconveniences that he has to go through that he had to go through. And sometimes we feel inconvenienced if we have to make a phone call to somebody's house. God, that we would remember our position in Jesus Christ. Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter six, verse one, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. But once he remembered where his position was, where he saw the angels crying, holy, 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 he said, woe is me, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I live amongst the people of unclean lips. Paul says, I was poorly clothed and beaten and homeless. And we labor, working with our own hands. He says, yeah, we, we got a job. We're not trying to prostitute the gospel or take advantage of the gospel. He says, I'm working. But a laborer is worthy of his hire. He understands that. But there are those who would take advantage of the ministry for their own sake. He says, we labor, working with our own hands. Being reviled, we bless. Wow, that's tough. That's tough. And it's hard to do in your own flesh. It's difficult to do in our own flesh. That's why we're told to walk in the spirit. That we won't fulfill the desires of the flesh. Being reviled, we, we bless. Sometimes, I mean, I tell you, I can only speak for for me because sometimes I can feel myself well enough I was on the phone the other day you know I customer service and customer service can sometimes be a thankless job but I thank God that he gives me an opportunity sometimes to engage with people and to be courteous and sometimes you you miss you know people nowadays aren't that courteous anymore. You know, they'll cut you off in, in the street and then cuss you out. You know, they did something wrong to you and now they're going to cuss you out like you did something wrong. And so, I mean, in the store, they'll jump in front of you or they'll stand in front of you and just not even say, excuse me, or, you know, sorry, I, you know, walk and run up. I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to step in front of you. But people are just not courteous. And sometimes when we're reviled, I don't always bless. I don't, I don't always bless. Now, I might not curse you, but sometimes in my own pride, you want to stand up and hold your position. And sometimes 
you know, we need to humble ourselves. And that is so difficult at times. But Jesus said, if you will come after me, you must first deny yourself. You have to deny yourself. And that takes a lot. Yes. We need to rely on the Holy Spirit of God because in my flesh, I'm ready to jump off on somebody. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to, you know, tell somebody off and, you know, that, oh, you was going to make me curse you out. No, I was going to curse you out, but I'm, by the Spirit of God, I'm withholding that. You know, oftentimes in our society, you know, meekness is oftentimes looked as weakness. You know, and people will sometimes take advantage of you. And they will. But you know sometimes when they do, Jesus said, pray for those who despitefully use you. What? <laughs> pray for those who despitefully use you. Wow. And, and, and the fact that you know that they're using you. He said, pray for those who despise you. So you have to know that they're using you. And you still have to pray for those who despise you. Being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we endure. We endure. Because God gives us the ability to endure. Jesus said, my father is greater than all. And those he have given to me, none will be lost. None will be lost. That's why we're able to endure persecution. Because we're kept by the power of God and not by our own power. We're kept by his power. So being persecuted, we endure. Being defamed, we entreat. He said, yeah, they're speaking slanderous lies about me. Back off. Ooh. That's rough. We back off. Being defamed, we entreat. He said, we have been made as the filth of the world, the offscouring of all things until now. He said, we've been made as the filth you're high, you've got this high position like you got it all going on. But we as the apostles are being slandered. We're being reviled. We're being persecuted. We've been made to look as the filth. The outscouring, the offscouring. That's like, you know, you got the greasy, dirty pan and the stuff you scrape off the bottom. You know, when you scrape all that, you know, grease out of the pan that has got like old cornmeal stuck in it. <laughs> you know, that old cornmeal and grease and, you know, fish grease from the previous time you cooked the fish. All of that stuff still in the bottom of the pan. The off scouring. He says, we've been made as the filth of the world, the offscouring of all things until now, even up to this day. But there's who, those who hold their positions and they, you know, they flaunt their position. They got all this wealth and driving all these Bentleys, expensive cars, living mansions. Apostle said that we're homeless. We are poorly clothed. We've been beaten. We've been homeless. We 
we're treated as the offscouring of all things, even until now. But even though humility is not often glamorous, it gives God glory. Let's take a look real quick at 2 Corinthians, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Philippians 2. Philippians 2 and 5, that's our close. Philippians 2, verse 5. Philippians 2, verse 5. And it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Jesus Christ is Lord. He humbled himself. He was spit upon, beaten, falsely accused, paraded naked through the street, humiliated, defamed. But God highly exalted him. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We are to remember, don't think more highly than we are. You didn't make it on your own. And humility, though often not glamorous, it gives God. Amen. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you. Thank you, Father God, to help us to see that our sufficiency is in you. And it's not about us. It's not about exaggerating our position. It's not about thinking more highly than we ought to, but remembering that you sent your only begotten son to die on our behalf, that whosoever believeth in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Father God, help us to, when we want to stand up, that we put all these things into your hand. And know, Father, that you are faithful and just. That our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Help us, Lord, to see you high and lifted up as Isaiah did. Help us to see, Father God, that we are people of unclean lips. And that by your blood, you allow us into your presence. You covered us with your righteousness. 
We didn't make it on our own. Our righteousness is as filthy rags before you. We thank you, Father God, for your precious Son and the blood that he shed. Thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. Continue to lead, guide us, and direct us, and help us to recognize who we are in you. It's in Jesus' most precious name we do pray and give thanks. Amen and amen. Song says, May your troubles keep you near the cross, and may your struggles show that you need God. May your battles in the